Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today is the start of my October wrap-up vlog. So the September wrap-up vlog works so well that I'm going to try it again this month. I was definitely able to work on it a bit earlier and get that video out earlier, which is great. So let's see how this works as I continue to do these wrap-up vlogs. I am decked out in my little witch's hat and my it's just a bunch of hocus pocus shirts um because it is the start of october but you know that if you've been watching my more recent videos that i've started to wear my halloween themed shirts a little bit earlier but yeah i'm just having a lot of fun with it and this is about as dressed up as you're gonna see me get during the month so let's just get into the first book that I have finished since I talked to you last. I also <laughs> finished a book at the end of September that I didn't expect to finish, which is why it wasn't in my wrap-up or in my vlog last month. So I finished Synchronized Sorcery, which is the 11th book in the Witchcraft Mystery Series by Juliet Blackwell. This is a series that follows a witch named Lily Ivory, who moves to San Francisco and opens up a vintage kind of clothing. It's mostly a vintage clothing store, but as the series has gone on, she's made friendships with other witches in the area. And so now they sell a variety of things. And this series usually follows not only what's going on with the store, and the characters that we have grown to know and love, but Lily usually also finds herself figuring out a mystery that usually involves a dead body. And that is exactly what happened in this installment. This, like I said, is the 11th volume in this series, and I can't say any more than that without spoiling things, but there have been some revelations in regards to her family and each of the mysteries that she investigates are always very interesting. Not a lot of this particular one had to do with like magic, I would say. But that being said, I kind of felt a little disconnected from this one because it's been so long since I read the last one. This is exactly why I don't like to read series as they're publishing because I do get disconnected. I feel like I need to reread a bit because I could definitely feel myself being pulled out of this one every once in a while and it didn't help that I didn't have a physical copy to read of this. I listened to this one entirely on audiobook because that's all the library had available I have since requested that the library get a digital copy and only because I haven't actually started collecting this series physically. I have always just borrowed a copy from the library but since lockdown and everything that's been going on in the world I just have not been borrowing physical books from the library and I've been okay with that. But this particular one I kind of feel the effects of not having that physical copy. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting. It has to do with things that happened at the World's Fair, which is a historical event I know next to nothing about. Um, so I found a lot of the stuff that was brought up to be interesting. And I'm looking forward to the next one. I do really enjoy the series. But I feel like I'll definitely need to reread this one to get the most out of it. Because I feel like I did miss some things, being that I was only able to listen on audio. And yeah, so that's pretty much all I have for an update for you right now. And I will be back with you later to check in again after I've read a bit. Hi everyone, it is Saturday, October 9th, and I have finished two books since I talked with you last. 
So the first book I finished was Candy Coated Murder, the first book in the Pumpkin Hollow Mystery Series by Kathleen Suzette. I have two types of videos for this book up on my channel. The first of those are my chapter by chapter playlist, which is my audio only reading vlogs, which give you my spoilery candid thoughts as I read through the chapters. And then I have my series first impressions video, which is just my general unspoilery thoughts on this book in its entirety. So if you want to hear my detailed thoughts on these books, definitely check out the links down in the description box below. But this was the Book One Cozy's Club October selection. Book One Cozy's Club is my book club where we read first in a series cozy mysteries. So that is what this was. Follows a woman who comes back to her hometown after being a professional student for 10 years. She's working in her family's candy shop. And there's a little bit of discourse in the town where part of the people in the town don't want to keep the holiday activities going because obviously the town is called Pumpkin Hollow. They do amp up the festivities during Halloween time and that pretty much starts Labor Day weekend. So that's how they make a lot of their money. They bring in tourists for festivities that the town holds. But there are some people in the town that don't want to keep having the festivities. They think that the town spends more money on the festivities than they make, especially with the decline in tourism that they've had in recent years. And so Mia, who's our main character, is trying to help figure out a way to help the town bring in more tourists to keep the festivities alive because obviously this time of the year is a big money earner for her family as well being the fact that they run a candy store on top of that she ends up finding her neighbor who has many enemies and is one of those people who didn't want to have the halloween festivities anymore in town dead on her front porch so besides helping figure out a way for the town to keep the halloween festivities going she's now also trying to find out who murdered her neighbor and so, short thing short, I really enjoyed this one, and I will be continuing with the series. So, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this one, definitely check out one of the two things linked down in the description box below in regards to this book. The second book that I finished was The Haunting by Bentley Little. This one follows a family who decides it's time to move where their house is located, the town has kind of gone down the hill and their son is getting picked on and so they find this really great house and move into it thinks everything's going to be just great but then things start to happen in their house so this is a haunted house story there are a lot of things to be aware of going into this one including child loss child murder mass murder, suicide, cutting, and rape, among other things. So if you're sensitive to any of those things, definitely give this book a pass. I ended up enjoying this one. It definitely had the right amount of creep factor for me. A lot of times when I'm looking for books like this, the creep factor is not sufficient. It doesn't have the amount of creep factor I'm looking for. This one definitely provided that. I can tell you that there was instances where I was reading this at night because that's when I do most of my reading is at night right before bed. That, you know, the house will creak, I'll hear something outside, and it would give me a little bit of a chill up my spine. But it wasn't enough to keep me up at night. So, yeah, definitely enjoyed that part of this book as well. What I didn't enjoy about this book was the number of sex scenes in it. I don't even understand why they were in here. There's only one possible reason I could think of that the sex scenes would be included, but that really wasn't made a connection. So I don't think that's what the author was going for in regards to those, but yeah. I don't read a lot of books with sex scenes in them. This one had about six of them, I think. Which, again, I don't feel like they had anything to do with this story. And the way they were written, 
were kind of gross. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I don't know if it's just because it's a sex scene from a man's perspective. Um, because most of the sex scenes that I have read in other books. Which again, I don't read a lot of those. But ones I have read have been done by women. This one just... Ones? <laughs> just seemed really crude um and in fact there were times where our characters were just like like they had no restraint like they get an image in them in their mind and they just had to like go for it there was one of those scenes where it is described that the husband forced himself on his wife and yeah not a fan not a fan but the haunted house portion of this book was interesting and how it ended up how everything resolved itself i didn't see coming i didn't see that that's the way it was going to work itself out and so i'm really interested to check out another one of bentley little's works because i thought he wound a good story i just could have done without the sex scenes <laughs> So yeah, this definitely won't be one that I'll be rereading, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy how it was put together. And so I ended up using this one for my trick or treat -a thon prompt of cover by. If you had checked my September vlog, you would have seen that while I was Barnes and Noble for my monthly manga club, I ended up trying to find a cover by book and this was the book I ended up or it was one of two books that I ended up purchasing. So I checked that one off the list. The Book One Cozy's Club selection ended up being for a book with food on the cover. Because it does have the trick or treat basket with the candy inside. Plus there's like a cake or something on the cover. So I have knocked off two of my trick or treat a thon prompts. And they actually happen to be in the same row. So that's great as well. And that's all that I've read since I talked to you last. So I will be back with you a little later after I've read a couple more things. Hi everyone. It is Wednesday, October 20th. I had to go into the office today to take care of something for a client. And so I decided to do a little bit of filming today. Um, I normally don't film during the week. I normally film on the weekends. But so far this month has been very good as far as reading. I read a lot. But I also read Scary Stories You Can Tell in the Dark. Or Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And more Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And the third one, Scary Stories 3. Um, I'll put a picture here. I actually have never read <laughs> these books before. Um, we've had them for a long time. I think we might have even had them since I was a kid. Um, at least these two. I don't have the third one. I listened to all three of them on audio through Hoopla. And when you listen to the audio, because it's a compilation, they don't go by first book, second book, third book it's like redone um i guess in a way to make all the stories more fluid but i really enjoyed listening to it and i would definitely recommend listening as opposed to reading because the feel was a lot different from me reading this especially because obviously i'm not the target audience for this type of book but there is one story in this one <laughs> That's called The Viper. That was my favorite. And if you listen to it, the impact of that story is so much better than if you read it. Because the illustration that is on the page for The Viper gives away the story. And so you'll be spoiled if you actually read the text. But I really, really enjoyed this. And so that is what I have read. Um, since I talked to you last. Hi everyone, it is Saturday, October 23rd, and I'm here to tell you about all of the things that I have read since I talked to you last. 
So from October 15th through the 18th, there was the Haunted 24-Hour Manga Readathon, which I was co-hosting with Justice Cave and Tony's Manga. And for that, I ended up reading 24 volumes of manga. So obviously, I'm not going to talk to you about all of those right now. I did do a specific Haunted 24-Hour Manga Readathon wrap-up video. So I will link that down in the description box below in case you're interested in hearing about all of the manga that I read and my thoughts on them. So I will tell you that I did also have my In Real Life Manga Club meeting and two of the volumes I read for the Haunted 24 Hour Manga Readathon was not talked about in that video and that's because I always do a separate video for the Monochrome Manga Club selections. So those two volumes were volume one of Sir Vamp by Strike Tonica, and this one's published by Seven Seas Rated Teen. And then I also read volume one of Toilet Bound Hanako-kun by Aida Iro. This one is published by Yen Press and Rated Teen. So I, like I said, have a specific video. It's called my Manga Series First Impressions video where I talk to you about my thoughts on these two volumes. The link for that is also down in the description box below. So the only other thing that I have finished since I talked to you last was Paradise Club by Tim Meyer. This was one of the selections I needed to read for my Rotating Decks TBR game for the booktube recommendation prompt. And in this one, we're following a family who has received a free trip to this beautiful vacation island. They get there with a bunch of other people who have won this free trip and while the father is roaming around he ends up seeing something that he wasn't supposed to have seen and this starts the skirmish. What the vacationers don't realize is that they are not the only ones who have been invited to this island. A bunch of serial killers have also been invited to the island with the objective of murdering all of the vacationers. And so we're basically following a bunch of the vacationers, not only the family that we meet at the beginning of the book, throughout their, like, the skirmish, trying to survive. And this is basically just a slasher novel. That's at least what I expected going in, and for the most part, this book definitely was that. It was everything that I thought it was going to be, until I got to the twist. So the twist kind of threw everything out the window for me. Everything started going downhill for me on this one. I didn't enjoy it much after that. I know... There is an author's note at the end of this book which basically says that he was writing this story for his patrons as like a serial novel and he would put up polls and have the patrons vote on little things that or the direction that the story would go so kind of like a choose your own adventure and whatever choice got voted on the most that's how he'd write the novel and I am wondering if the twist had something to do with that because for me that totally didn't make any sense. It definitely wasn't something that I was expecting but it also made this story almost like a different genre. Like yeah I can't even tell you because it comes at like the 75 percent mark or so and so by then you know, we're getting a lot of character deaths, we're seeing a lot of the assassins, and that part is what I signed up for. I signed up for a slasher book, and then I got to that twist, and everything went out the window. So, I enjoyed what I read of this book, but it's not something that I'm going to reread in the future. That being said, I do have two other books by Tim Meyer on my to-read list because they sounded interesting. Um, one is a Megalodon book, book about a Megalodon, and the other one is a book about dinosaurs. And those are two things that I'm really interested in reading about, 
And the author's writing style was very easy for me to get into. This book, Paradise Club, moved super fast for me. So I don't think it had anything to do with the author's writing style. I think it had everything to do with the choices the patrons made in regards to how that book ended up. But yeah, even though I didn't enjoy Paradise Club as much as I thought I was going to, I'm definitely interested in checking out more of the author's work in the future. As part of the Monaco Manga Club, though, we are also doing a series read. And because we are no longer talking about the first book in that series, I am not including my thoughts on the next two volumes in the series in my series first impressions video. So the two other volumes that I read for Club were Parasite volumes three and four by Hitoshi Iwaaki. This series follows an alien invasion and the aliens are supposed to inhabit human hosts. And for some of those parasites, they were unable to inhabit their hosts completely. And so they're basically looked at as failed. They basically failed their mission. And we follow one of these parasites who wasn't able to complete his mission, learning how to coexist with his host. And not only that, but keeping away from parasites who have inhabited their host completely because those parasites see parasites like Miggy, that's the name of the parasite that we're following in this story, um, to be worthless basically. They didn't complete their mission and so they want to take them out. And yeah, this is definitely not a series that I thought I was going to enjoy. I acquired these volumes through a Humble Bundle that I picked up. If you're not familiar with Humble Bundle, they do a lot of bundles of things. So books, mangas, games, um, how-to manuals like self-help and uh, books and things like that. They do different themed bundles and part of the proceeds of the bundles go to charity. And so Kodansha, the publisher for Parasite, well, they've acquired the rights for Parasite. They aren't the original publisher, but they had offered a bundle that had other series that I was interested in and so I had ended up buying the bundle for that series and just got Parasite kind of like as a freebie but it is a pay what you can model and there are levels and things I always go for the full package um, because the value on these humble bundles are so amazing but yeah I I didn't think this was going to be one I was going to read and it just so happened that one of the manga club members had suggested it for a series read and the rest of the members were amenable to it. So I am enjoying this much more than I thought I was going to and we're having some great discussions on the story as well. We actually spend the most amount of time talking about this, these or the two volumes that we read every month. Um, more so than we've ever talked about any of the volumes that we've had in the past. So that has been great as well. So that does it for everything that I have read since I checked in with you last. Like I said, links for all of the manga that I read besides the two volumes of Parasite are down in the description box below in case you're interested in hearing about all of the titles that I read because there was a lot. But I will check in with you one more time before the month is over. And I've got a few books on the go right now. So I should have quite a bit more to update for you then. I'm doing really well on my trick or treat on prompt. So that's great also. So yeah, that will do it for me today. And I'll check back with you later. Hi everyone, it is Sunday, October 31st, so it is Halloween day, and I am here to give you my final wrap-up for the month. So I have finished quite a few things since I talked to you last, um, the first of which is Hell House by Richard Matheson. 
I had bought this one as part of my venture to Barnes & Noble to look for a cover buy trip back in uh, late September. So you would have seen my shopping trip for that in my September vlog. But this one is a haunted house story. It follows a group of people, some um, scientists, some are psychic mediums, and they are headed to the Belasco house to try to exercise it. So I, <laughs> this one started out very promising. I was very interested and intrigued in what was going on. The manifestations of the house was interesting. And then things started to go downhill for me. Um, there was a lot of sexual situations, not explicit sex scenes, but there were two female characters in this cast of characters who were being affected by this house quite a lot. And the way that they were affected by the house was very sexual. And I just didn't enjoy that, especially not from a male perspective. And so, yeah, this one started out so promising, but it went downhill for me. So I didn't really enjoy it in the end. Like, I understand why the women were being affected the way they were. It definitely ties into something with this house, but there was just... It's not something I enjoy reading about, and then for the way things happen to have happened, I just yeah didn't end up enjoying this one, so... I'm glad I read it, though. It's very rare that I buy a book and read it right away, and... The two books that I picked up for my cover by prompt for the Trick or Treatathon were books that I read this month. So that was really good, but unfortunately I ended up not enjoying both of the books that I picked up very much. So that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> the next thing I picked up was my Bleach Omnibus number 6. This has volumes 16, 17, and 18 in it, and it's by Tight Kubo. And we're still following our main character Ichigo Kurosaki who is the substitute soul reaper I know you've heard me talk about this series so much I don't want to recap it again but they are still in the soul society in this one trying to complete their mission and I am just really really enjoying this series so far we have not yet watched the corresponding anime episodes but I think we'll be doing that soon my daughter still needs to read this volume before we can do that but she is working on midterms right now so eventually I presume in the next couple weeks we'll be watching the anime episodes but I'm really really enjoying this then it was the fall into manga love readathon this week it was the last week of October the fall into manga love readathon is a manga readathon that is hosted by Shay over at Shay Geeks Out I'll link her announcement video down in the description box below in case you're interested in participating at a later date. But she usually has the manga love readathons, I believe is what she calls them, um, seasonally. So there's one in spring and there's one in fall. So there'll definitely be one coming up soon if you missed this round. But basically, it's a really laid back readathon. She usually only has a couple of prompts, one of them being to read a volume of manga a day, read a Shea favorite, and then for this one, it was to read Halloween themed or spookier mangas. And so I decided to go with Phantom Tales of the Night. So for this round, I decided to go with Phantom Tales of the Night by Matsuri. This is a story that follows our innkeeper, who is the character you see here on this cover here who trades sanctuary for secrets. And so there are a bunch of short stories in each volume. And so we learn about not only the innkeeper or the owner as they are called, but we also learn about their assistants and some of the guests that stay there. And so by the seventh volume, we have a pretty large cast of people that we are following. I decided to pick this one up because if I was going to read a volume a day, I had seven volumes of this series in my collection that were waiting to be read. And so I had actually read volume one with my manga club when it first came out. And I believe that was a couple years ago. 
Um, and so I've just been collecting it ever since and have not read the rest of them. So I'll show you these covers real fast. This is volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, volume six, and volume seven. And so I am just really enjoying learning about all of the characters and watching them go through things. And yeah, these volumes all have color pages at the beginning. The color pages in volume three were ones that I really, really loved. And so I will share that with you right now. And so this is the scene that I saw when I opened up volume three. And I just think that is gorgeous. But I really enjoy the art style on this series. The stories are very interesting, but they are thought provoking. Like some of the stories definitely need a lot of thought, I think. And there were some stories that I didn't quite understand what happened. So I'm still thinking about those stories, trying to figure out what happened. I'll definitely need to go back and reread some of those because yeah, some of it was confusing to me, and I'm not sure I understand what happened at the end of those stories or what the concluding idea was for those stories. But I am still really enjoying my journey with this one. Each story is very interesting to me. I love the art style, and I really enjoy learning about all of our characters. So this is definitely one that I'm going to continue to collect and read. And so I'm really happy to have been able to complete my seven volumes of manga for the Manga Love Readathon. And then I did just finish one last thing at the end of this month, just a few minutes ago, in fact. And that was In a Dark Dark Room and Other Scary Stories, retold by Alvin Schwartz, pictures by Dirk Zimmer. This is a reread for me. Um, this was part of my Trick or Treatathon bingo board. Um, it completes one of the corners of the bingo board, so I'll get the four corners bingo. But this one's basically just a bunch of short stories aimed for kids level two reading level. So um, that's grades one through three per the little sticker here. This is a short story collection that I really, really enjoyed when I was a kid, and I have just really enjoyed reading it year after year after year. I try to read it every October. Um, the last couple years, I think I haven't picked it up, so it was really nice to revisit this one. I do have a favorite story in this collection, so if you know this one, my favorite story is The Green Ribbon. And yeah, super fast read because obviously this one is for kids, but I just really, really enjoyed rereading all of the little stories. And the illustrations are kind of creepy as well. You can kind of see here. I don't want to open it up because like I said, they are short stories. And because it's for kids, the font is super huge. But I really, really enjoyed this one as well. And that's going to complete all of my reads for the month of October. So, editing die here, I forgot to mention that I also finished My Best, my best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This one is about what the title says. It's about a girl who has a best friend that gets an exorcism. Um, I, <laughs> I really shouldn't have read this one. <laughs> Exorcism is related to religion. It's a religious practice. And if you follow me for a while, you know that I don't enjoy reading things that have to do with religion. And I especially don't enjoy things where there are characters who have parents who are ultra-religious and yet do things like hit them until they fall down the stairs. Um don't believe what other people are telling them, you know, about their children and blame their children's actions on other people. I didn't enjoy this one. I 
probably shouldn't have read it, like I said. I definitely should not have read this one as my first Grady Hendrix book. Um, but I did like that, you know, there were references to 80s things. I recognized some of it. Um, the titles of each chapter had to do with um, 80s, popular 80s songs. I didn't recognize all of them, but I recognized the majority of them, so I did enjoy that. I listened to some of this on audio, um, and then when it started to get into the things that I really don't enjoy um, about the religious aspects of this book, I had to switch over to physical copy or an ebook copy, which I borrowed from the library because it was too much to listen to. Um, there was a lot of bullying, and I just, yeah, it was okay. Um, I'm hoping that I'll enjoy a different Grady Hendrix book in the future, but this one was definitely not for me. So anyway, back to past Die to tell you about the rest of the things that she's read during the month of October. Last count, I read 41 things this month. It would be more if you count each omnibus broken down into its separate volumes of manga. Um, I think that would take me up to about 46 or so. So I did a lot of reading this month. I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to be all read out come November. Um, I do have quite a bit on my plate if you've already seen my November TBR. Um, but I am still hopeful that I will be able to get through everything. And yeah, I had an excellent reading month. And... I'm still on track to read my 52 novels by the end of 2021. That's always a goal that I have every year. I've obviously read a lot of manga this year, which I'm not going to apologize for because I've had a great time reading this year. But yeah, I definitely think I'll be able to reach my 52 novels by the end of 2021. And so that is really great. And that's pretty much it it so let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of the books that i've read during the month of october and what you thought of them or if you're planning on checking out some of them after you've heard me talk a little bit more about them if nothing else and you would just like to let me know that you are here if you could leave me an autumn leaf emoji down in the comments below that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that will do it for me for october so i hope you're all doing great i hope you're all safe and healthy and until next time take care and smile always bye